The men in blue, they took an oath to serve and protect. They are duly expected to conduct this oath to all Kenyans, in spite of the turbulent conditions. This has been their forefront duty. But for decades, Kenyans have labeled the police as corrupt, merciless, immoral, gruesome, and no-nonsense beings. It is a label that unfortunately some Kenyan police deserve, while many do not. These people who are saying that police is bad, they are the ones who will kill. They want to be corrupt. They are called out to scenes of murder and serious assault. Acting as witnesses to these horrific circumstances is incredibly stressful and can at times lead to feelings of depression and disillusionment. I'm Calvin Magawe, an investigative journalist in Nairobi, Kenya. I will attempt to answer and find the nest of this wasp stinging the mental health of a police task force. The wasp in the mind. Not a month goes by without news of a police officer committing suicide in Kenya. The phenomenon is so common, it poses a threat to both the officer involved and the public at large. When I look back, I see the officers were employed when we were sober. Even the recruitment, it comes like now, the one is coming. People are sober, we look for sober people. That's why you have the medical uh, party to ascertain uh, the ability, stability, of the officer before the employment. But eventually, because of the recurring you know, the occurrences of events and all those, you find that the officers are passed through some you know, situations they cannot control themselves. From the commanders now today, like we have had now, the training for the regional commanders, formation and unit commanders, and the directors, police reporters. We want our seniors to be aware of what is happening down there. You know, some of them are not immediate bosses to the juniors. They have several ranks or stages to reach them. One is then left to ask, is the training from the academies meant to toughen or to harden the mental fortitude of the men and women in blue? With such vigorous trainings, it is presumed its effectiveness must be felt on the field. Are these trainings part and parcel of the mental health triggers to our police task force? Is it overwhelming that what they were once taught in the academies is less applicable and tactics have to change? We are dealing with a crisis of a gigantic magnitudes, something that has lived among us since independence. It is a crisis that is so entrenched that requires an expert opinion of the situation on the ground. The aftermath of this condition is as mysterious on what exactly we are dealing with. <laughs> na mahali niko napitia hapo ni ni mahali unapita na hakuna hakuna nyumba unaona tu kichaka na hiyo kichaka iko na shifta wakati mwingine tuko tunaenda huko shifters wanatufamia na tukifika na wakitufamia tena kuna wanatokea mpaka mpaka na dumai wenzangu wana wao unaona mume wao mwaache peke yake wengine wanapotea when a police officer goes through a stressful moment, he doesn't find something else that can help him. At, at that point is when maybe he can turn to his firearm and use it as a weapon. As Kenyans, we have watched our men in uniform really suffering. But you know, we forget that you're not born a police. Mental illnesses actually start from a very young age. And if they can be resolved at that young age, 
then you know somebody can have the resilience to overcome whatever environmental challenges they have in their workplaces, for instance, as well as a lot of support in the workplaces. Officers pass through challenges. Maybe the public can come there, you know, mourn and some also, you know, empathize and sympathize. But eventually the police officer is now who is the one who is responding to the particular to that particular scene. They are the ones who are picking the bodies from the scenes of, of accidents or whatever, any scenarios. They are the ones who are witnessing, you know, people who have been broken down, people who are dying in their hands when they are carrying them for, for rescue. Move you a little further. <laughs> are we safe here? Yes, we are very safe here. We police officers are human beings. And the, 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 the citizens and the public must accept that we are human beings, we are their brothers, sisters. And uh, we went to, 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 the, to the same schools and universities with them. We eat food like them. We, you know, we have needs just like them. So whenever they see anything that is unusual, unusual behavior in, in one of us or any of us, let it not be a cause of alarm. Some of these officers experience much worse as their working stations turn out to be brutal and harsh. With this, it becomes difficult for them to work under stressing conditions with long extended timelines in their harsh environments. Hence, the menace of this wasp in the mind that causes an endless sting and vibration leading to mental health triggers. These are the tales and stories that paint the pictures of animosity, inhumane and gruesome feelings towards our officers. Their actions have led the people to whom they protect to have less or no faith, and in return seek to paint a picture of every man for themselves while seeking protection from the law. Wanajua kuna mali tunaweza enda naona. Wanajua sisi we sleep anywhere. Mali popote tu kwa tunajipata tunalala. For the sake to kesho tu ifiki naona. Sasa hapa masanse wakikuja wapate watu wamelala. Out of nothing wana wameza kuwachapa. Yaani history nyingi bado naona. When you think about the police one thing that comes to my mind is corruption, how corrupt they are. Well, not all of them, but they are the majority are very corrupt. That makes the country not to move forward. As a police officer, if one misbehaves, most of us, or maybe all of us, are stereotyped. Stereotyped that police are brutal, police are, because you don't see, you have not seen a commander, you know, you know, you know a commander maybe beating somebody or maybe assaulting somebody. But uh, just a junior officer, because of, because of his stresses or maybe his depression, he can go in to see to that and have a problem. So like the people who are desperate, particularly those people who maybe they have, they have some financial constraint, and there's a lot of demand from the family. There's a lot of demand from the public. They are in debt, and they are pecuniary embarrassed in a way because their pay slips are, are overstrained. I ended up losing my job simply because I was a sick person. We had a lot of friction with, uh, with my family. And at, my, at some point, that is when my father, my father took me in. Because I, I, they had a, I had something they call we, creating disturbance at home. I went home very drunk at night, brought a lot of chaos. Uh, ended up in the police cells. Kwa saidi ya kesa sa na yeye hakuwa na shuguri na familia. Okay, ameoa. Kwa na bibi nyumbani, si bibi ni wazazi, bibi ni wazazi. Sa zile liso na likuwa na sema, likuwa na sema, likuwa na lipo mshara kidogo sana. So wakifika nyubani, 
kuna kitu analeta hata affair ya kuja kwa nani hizo challenges kuja home wewe ndio unamtafutia sasa affair lolo yake kama bwana haikuwa inaonekana now a former general service unit officer has committed suicide in Kapkiamo village Baringa North. Jafet Ruto, the father to the deceased, say that his son had been in distress after being sacked since he was unable to raise fees for his children. Now according to the father, life has never been easy for Mark after he was fired from work. Without looking at their welfare, uh, it adds to the stresses that uh, they experience. Uh, in their line of work and it makes a bad situation worse. The buzz from the WASP has become louder and the loss is worrying. The government is now taking action on self and mental health awareness among the police force in which the talk was once a tell. Senator Sylvia Kasanga, who is the nominated senator for Makweni, pushed and advocated for the mental health bill to be passed in the parliament after being mentioned by Honorable Ekutons, and her efforts have not been fruitless. The human rights angle that the current bill, and it's called the Mental Health Amendment Bill, it's a Senate bill 2018, it introduces the human rights aspect that all these other bills did not have. It was most unfortunate when the bill, the 2014 bill that you have alluded to, it was Honorable Lekuton's bill, went into the House and only managed first reading. And it died. And I came in and it was a big push. I have to tell you it's a big push because it's really an area that people just don't understand. But there are Kenyans who understand because we have psychiatrists and they're there even in the ministry. So now we've really put them to task and I can tell you they're under a lot of pressure. So the bill actually addresses Kenyans as a whole, civil servants included, because what we are saying in the bill is that mental health needs to be streamlined into the primary health care. So health is a devolved uh, function in our current constitution. So we are saying county governments have a role to play when it comes to handling of mental uh, wellness and illnesses, treatment, rehabilitation, training, and it also must be a multi-sectoral approach. So we have to see something happening in the education sector. The police service is um, really taking mental health uh, as a serious matter. We, there is a, the, the, the directorate of uh, psychosocial support has, uh, has been established, basically to be able to handle mental issues of our, our police officers. And what is happening is we have uh, around 271 counselors and chaplains who are basically been deployed to handle mental issues of our officers. So I would urge all the police officers who are in recovery to form support groups to help other officers who are still in service because group, group therapy is very, very effective. If they could have noticed that maybe and that problem, because uh, surely this was, de was depression. I think at this point, if it was treated, I could still be serving. Asa do ufanya iyo kazi katika iyo kikosi lazima dekuwa mlevi. Asa tu kakuja kulialize iyo sasa kukuwa mlevi kakuwa ni ni sasa lazima atibiwe. Let's not forget that a lot of the issues that ail our young people. Uh, uh, men in uniform as well, to do with use and abuse of drugs because of the stress of the workplace, also affect them, you know, uh, mentally significantly and affect the family as well. So you can see the kind of outreach that is required is such that it has to be at that family level and not just an individual level. The WASP has triggered an initiative by the National Police Service, dubbed Momcompia. The program's concern is geared towards helping our police understand and undergo mental health awareness to protect them as they carry their duties. The report states that, and I quote, the work of the police officer is often exhausting, dangerous, and even traumatic. It further affirms that police are generally at the receiving end at all community problems. They are expected to maintain law and order in every difficult situation besides putting their lives at risk as soon as they leave home every day. We have witnessed 
what is happening within NPS. We have witnessed suicide, we have witnessed homicide, and we cannot sit back and continue watching our brothers, our sisters, our parents being butchered, losing their lives in this manner. As a group, we need to work closely to be able to institutionalize promotive and preventive mental health care practices. We believe that this opportunity that KPS has granted us will go a long way in entrenching positive, promotive mental health care practices. It is said better late than never. The task force needs to ensure that as they uphold and maintain law and order, they must also kill the buzz that is causing this havoc by embracing their challenges and seeking help without any conviction or fear. As citizens, we must change our perception towards the men in blue and work hand in hand to ensure we keep our country a safe place for a better tomorrow. With all hands joined together, we all shall keep fighting this wasp until the nest is destroyed.